Hi, friends. Welcome to Grow to Succeed. It's your place to become the best version of yourself. Please feel free to join in this amazing learning journey with Grow to Succeed. You have to take one simple action, and that's just click on the subscribe button. And feel free to share this channel with your friends, colleagues, and all the family members so they can also be part of this fantastic learning journey and create a better version of themselves. Today, I am super excited. I'm really happy because I have one of the fantastic master trainer who does a lot of, lot of soft skills training. And his goal, passion, purpose is in sync with what we do in Grow to Succeed. Sharin Kalathil. He has delivered lots of training programs in topmost institutions in the country. And he has also delivered many training programs in many companies such as LNT, Maruti Suzuki, and so on. His goal is to empower individuals with knowledge and skills to unlock their hidden potential and help them grow professionally. He's really passionate about facilitating, no doubt, because he's a soft skill trainer. I can say he's a master trainer. He's passionate about facilitating positive transformation in people's lives through training. It's a fantastic tool, right? And I, his purpose actually made me very curious because he's completely dedicated to creating a supportive and engaging learning environment across the globe. That's something that struck me, Sharin. I really want to understand how you want to do that. And with this, he really wants to help every learner, every student to succeed and achieve their amazing goals in their life. Sharin, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to Grow to Succeed. Thank you so much, Vasim. So it was a pleasure once I received a call to become a part of this particular uh, talk show, if I may call it, because I've been seeing you doing a lot of sessions recently. And uh, I'm glad that because I could uh, talk to you and maybe reach to uh, a better reach of audience across the globe, if I may say, so that uh, they can also, uh, in hindsight, uh, get to know what we talk uh, and help them to succeed in their life. So as you say, grow to succeed. So happy to be here. Thank you so much, Sharin. Really appreciate your time. I know it's Sunday, but still taking out of uh, time, out of uh, the fun day, that Sunday, it's it's not that easy, but still I truly appreciate your valuable time spending with us. And I am sure uh, considering Sharin, uh, you have been working with lots of people, starting with students, then working professionals, then entrepreneurs, and so on. And you have been conducting lots of training programs, delivering trainings, changing their thought processes, and changing their perspectives. Because I strongly believe training is the only tool which we can use to change people's thoughts, perspectives, behavior, enhance the skills, as well as you know enhance the knowledge, and so on. Um, I really want to start with students, now, because you also conduct lots of training programs to help students change their thoughts, perspectives, and so on, I have a strong feeling that you know the real challenges of students. If, if I may ask you, Sharin, according to you, based on your experience, you know, communicating, collaborating, understanding students, what are the common challenges you hear from them? Uh, what's an interesting question, first of all, because uh, people always talk about uh, how to uh, give solutions, but then we are starting this conversation with what are the problems and challenges that people face, so that once they get an answer to this, maybe they'll also be able to apply this in their life and they can also improve upon themselves. So uh, coming back to the question, which are the, what, are, what are those challenges that students face these days, uh, especially uh, let us take students uh, for that aspect. Uh, I'll talk about college students as such. Okay, so, uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, lately I've been to a lot of colleges across the country, especially in my state, because uh, 
uh, we all take part of this particular program, which is called induction program, which happens in the first year of every college. So all the most of the top colleges they come to this program, which is a one-day program. Right. So uh, in the last two months, I would have interacted with at least uh, around thousand students across different institutions. Wow. And there are three to four uh, challenges that these days that I have seen students face, and we call them we can call it maybe twenty-first century challenges faced by students. Mm -hmm. And the first list would be on that first point on that list would be. Uh, career uncertainty among students. I see, or like uh, all of us have been to college before, yeah. But uh, I don't really know how many of them really planned their college life while they were studying their grad, like a uh, uh, pre-graduation course. Uh, in Kerala, we call it as higher secondary. Maybe we call it plus one, plus two. Right. Okay. But many of the students they don't really understand what they want to do with their life while they're studying in their higher secondary but then they opt to any of those courses mm -hmm. which their parents might be suggesting them or they right. or their seniors would have joined but they never measure it with their personal aptitude so what happens is they might have a different aptitude but they would be doing a different course and after few weeks in the college they are kind of confused whether are they doing the right thing for their life so okay. that is a career uncertainty yeah, that yeah. I have seen most of the students face. And uh, second point would be to uh, like uh, I ask them, how do you spend your time? For example, I ask them about their hobbies, and they say uh, they spend most of the time their mobile. And then I ask them, how much time do you spend in a mobile every day? And you would be surprised hearing this answer. Most of them, out of their twenty-four hours, they spend around seven to eight hours in mobile. Wow. Apart from their life in college, apart from their time that they spend at their home, most of them are glued to it. So I say maybe technology distraction is the second point. Right. And combining this after three years, what they face is this academic pressure. They have been studying a course for three to four years, mm -hmm. but they don't really know what they want to do with their life. But they have to do a job after completing graduation. So right. how do they fit in the society mm -hmm. norms? is what students really face that. So I would say career uncertainty, technology distraction, and uh, maybe academic pressure are the three major problems that personally I have seen students face in these days. Okay. All right. So that's really amazing because, uh, Sharin, I also work with lots of students as part of the NGO, which I'm part of. And um, uh, you're very lucky because in the last uh, two months, you got an opportunity to communicate, collaborate, and then share your thoughts, inspire, motivate students around, you know, uh, 1,000 students. Um, we also conduct lots of training programs um, uh, during the weekends, especially, and we do connect with high school, college students, degree holder students, and so on to basically empower them, motivate them inspire them give them the right direction like you rightly said they are uncertain about the career even even though they are doing degree they are not sure about the career yeah. they don't know what they want to do even after graduating they don't know what they want to do right they just want to find a job even if they enter into a job they don't know what to do they're just following the flow right so we have seen all these challenges and uh, we also try to guide them um, in terms of uh, conducting series of training programs uh, with respect to uh, the career counseling and so on, which kind of gives some clarity to the students and helps them a lot uh, so that they can wisely choose the career, not just to follow the herd rather than uh, not to even listen to parents and not to even follow his or her friends, right? Instead, design the career, design the entire life, life, right? Uh, keeping all those um, in mind, I have created a very beautiful uh, training program called as Design right. Your Life, and which is available on the Grow to Succeed channel. And people can go, they can see lots of ins insights have been shared and they can definitely, you know, that's going to help them design their career as well as life. And the other part you mentioned, Sherin, um, that's related to uh, the academic pressure, right? And you did mention three uh, major challenges, and I am sure, uh, no doubt about it. And if I ask you, 
another question. What can we do? What can parents do? What can um, the teachers do in order to address these common challenges? Um, like, um, once I talk, like, just because we had a conversation about what students are facing, and it is of utmost importance that as the fraternity who are around them, like they could be parents, they could be teachers, or they could be mentors, or as you said, career counselors. So um, the matured crowd around them are the only option that they have. And I think uh, it is our responsibility, maybe towards the society to help them out. Because most of us have been in this scenario before. Absolutely. And uh, maybe we were fortunate enough to land in the position right now, where we are kind was of also going one back to help the society. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, we cannot really blame them because that has been the scenario that is happening across the uh, student community for a very long time. Right. And as students, um, they are prone to that particular problem and they would also be thinking how to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, just because I also mentioned three things, maybe I'll also suggest these three methods that we can, it's my personal perspective that yes. I think this could be helpful for people. Just like what you're doing at currently, like you are, you have a YouTube channel which is empowering people. Maybe they can come here and they can hear different perspective about from different people across uh, different organizations, right. and they can help themselves out. And one thing that I think is similar to what you're doing, it is called open communication. Like we have to communicate maybe the teachers in their first day or first week of college, or the parents. They have to have this conversation with their kids on what they really want to do with their life. True. So I, I had this conversation with one of the students recently and this person they, this person messaged me in LinkedIn. So I asked them, you have to create an account in LinkedIn. And the first day after this college, once this student started LinkedIn, uh, this person came to me and asked me, that I'm a really good student. I'm a studious student. I get good, really good marks, but then I don't really know what to do with my life. Right. I, I, I don't know where to strive myself forward. Yeah. And... Uh, he scores good marks, hmm. but then he understands the fact that marks are not just enough to lead a happy life. Yeah. So we have to have an open communication with the students on asking them what makes them happy. Hmm. So they scroll Instagram and they yeah. think, okay, these are the things that they make them happy. But once they start living their life, they're not, they're kind of clueless, like, will this make me happy? Yeah. So we have to understand what they really want to do with their life. And for that, I would suggest them to have, maybe we can have a goal setting session with that particular student. Okay. Uh, understand what they really want to do with their life. So for example, one student might be thinking, okay, they want to roam around the world. That is what makes that student happy. Right. To roam around the world, you don't get a free visa to travel across the globe. You have to earn yes. money. Yeah. So maybe we can connect the person with a career which can make the student travel and at the same time also earn money. Maybe tourism is one particular thing that person can do. Yeah. All right. So uh, likewise, we should have an open communication, even students and students. And that has to happen before the joint college. That yes. is what I said. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, number two, I think, even though we have a kind of an open communication, not every one of us know what are the career opportunities that lies ahead of us. So I think it is always good to have uh, students to act in the career guidance session and for which teachers can play a major role. The open communication has to come with parents and maybe close relatives. And this career guidance has to come with, has to come from teachers. Right. While they teach this particular student and they might be able to identify what is the aptitude of this particular student and what this student might be really good at. And they can give a career guidance students career guidance session to the students while they were in the final year of their plus one or plus two right, right. high secondary education. And because we can't really give a career guidance to, session to an engineering student who is has yeah. started their civil engineering exactly, and then telling this person you are good at mechanical engineering after they start started studies. Right, right. Okay, so this has to happen beforehand. And and last point I think would be something similar to what I think you are aspiring to do is to have, is to build a holistic platform where people can share what they really want to do with their life. Right. So connect with people, like I would say it as networking. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, we, we are surrounded with technology, but then I, I'm not sure how many of them really make use of it. Absolutely. So you send me a message asking me to share my thoughts, but then there are a lot of people who might be actually wanting to do this, but are not thinking about it. Yeah. But then maybe uh, Sherin and Basim can connect with thousand students, but people like us, maybe they are more number. We can connect to maybe lakhs of people. Right. And that is where we can bring up change. So I think it is good to build a network where people can share their ideas holistically so that we can help people to improve. So that is my third suggestion. Wow, Sherin, mind blowing. I think um, you shared million dollar, you know, solutions fantastic perspectives fantastic observation and um, i'm sure and confident that you know considering you do a lot of analysis because i have seen you working closely and the way you analyze things the way you come with your perspectives and uh, not only that i think you also have a lot of sense of humor which i i i personally like right so please keep going and uh, because we are talking about uh, so many aspects and you did talk about um, uh, the challenges, top three challenges and um, the top three solutions, what we together can do. The parents uh, having open discussion, conversation with the kids on what they want to do and the teachers, you know, helping them with their career designing, the career guidance, at, maybe in class um, 11 and 12 so that they know they have 100% clarity on what they need to do and so on. Um, very, very helpful suggestion. And thank you so much, Shireen, for sharing your insights and the, the, uh, the solution to the existing problems. Now, because we are talking on so many things, I really wanted to also understand from your um, experience, Shireen, on the life skills. Because the life skills, you being a soft skills trainer, I am sure, you know, you're uh, the, the, the closest um, skill, the closest training program to your heart is something related to the life skills, right? So according to you, in 21st century, uh, the life skills plays crucial role in an individual success. So according to you, what are the top three or five life skills the students should focus? Uh, all right. Uh, so I, I think we are moving into a kind of a uh maybe the crux of this particular conversation was in mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking about challenges and we talked about uh, what uh, teachers and students as a community we can develop right. and then we are uh, dwelling deep into life skills so uh, before i answer this question i think we'll have to bring some clarity because people who would be listening to this conversation they would be thinking uh, there are a lot of skills because uh, we talk about hard skills we talk about hard soft skills we talk about life skills so uh, maybe we'll have to give them a kind of a reference about what is the difference between a soft skill and a life skill. So mm -hmm. maybe uh, like we can put it in simple words, like life skills are those skills which are needed for us to lead a uh, good qualitative life. Anybody can live a life, right? but then how to bring quality purely depends upon life skills that we can imbibe upon. And soft skills are those skills where we we'll need those skills for good interpersonal skills and especially for professional growth. Right. And putting this together, we'll have a better life if we have a combination of both life skills and soft skills. So uh, to give up an example, like cooking is a life skill. I think everybody should have it. Right. And uh, communication skills is a soft skills mm -hmm. because we need to have that. Uh, if you have to um, climb the ladders up in the organization once we start working. So in my opinion, if you ask me, what are the three life skills, maybe major things that uh, from my perspective that everyone should have would be at this point of time uh one will be digital literacy right uh i, I like uh, we, we are literate uh, like a, a country where uh, we can maybe tell uh, 90 percent of people are literates but then uh, being a literate means writing our own name um without any spelling mistake <laughs> yeah, but then yeah. if you ask people if you ask a student to send an email uh, once they are in the final day of the college, many of them struggle because they would start writing a story. So we have to put it in a crisp and uh, right. well-mannered uh, email. So digital literacy, I think, plays a major role nowadays. Yes. Uh, because every day technology has improved. So right now we are speaking in Zoom. Before maybe COVID, uh, rarely people knew about what Google Meet or Teams or yes. Zoom is. So digital literacy plays a major role. Yeah. And second one would be to 
the critical thinking and problem solving would be uh, my uh, point as a second one because yep. uh, there are a lot of people who can give solutions but very rarely people can give innovative solutions so right. for which we'll have to have critical thinking mindset mm-hmm. uh, everybody thinks of solutions but then uh, people like you who always think of empowering people across the world uh they also think in terms of critical thinking so at this particular problem for this particular thing at this point of time what is the best solution that we can have so critical right. thinking plays a major role and last one would be is my favorite word also in training when i use uh, when i go for training it's called adaptability for changes mm-hmm. so agility uh we might be yeah. telling yeah agility so we might be thinking right now critical thinking is important but tomorrow if we think uh maybe creative thinking is much more important we'll have to adapt yes. we can't really say that okay i told critical thing yesterday uh, but then we have to admit the fact that we have to be agile nowadays Absolutely. so i think these are the three skills i uh, in my perspective which people would really require going forward in the next generation absolutely totally agree sharin all right so let's also because we spoke about two things right one is soft skills the other one is uh, life skills you did spoke about life skills let let's talk about Uh, the influence of soft skills in our life and i am sure the number one would be you did mention communication skills which is crucial it is because we were able to communicate efficiently right that's why we are here absolutely <laughs> if we were not able to communicate i don't think so we would have created an opportunity and then we would have discussed so many things what is the influence of communication in one's life especially the students um influence of communication skills if you say that i would say the most important skill uh, like forget about soft skills i think most important skill would be the communication skills yeah like uh, we say that uh, people who cannot even communicate they do have a language so they they speak through co- their uh, sign language right okay so i was part, also a part of a training program where i was uh, given it uh, like a training was given to me on sign language so uh, i was literally thinking okay where would this play a major role when i am going to communicate with my students but i think mm-hmm. irrespective of what language that we use our body language also play a major role Absolutely. for example uh, if i say something and uh, if you know it th- then i understand okay you are listening to me you are understanding something that i speak so i think when i been we talk about communication skills both verbal and non verbal both plays a major role and uh, especially for students i always ask my student okay uh, why do people tell us that we have to improve our english communication skills especially people like rosintia because we have got diverse languages a diverse culture why do always people insist us to speak english to develop english language and uh, they tell because english is important then i ask them why is english important and that is why i i i started preparing myself upon what are the importance of communication skills i asked them three questions the first question i always ask is um like which is the most spoken native language in the world and the answer is chinese yeah but uh, earlier china was the most popular country but right now it is india it's india <laughs> but chinese yeah it's india so uh, mandarin is the most spoken language just because people from china most of them they speak their native language right and the second most spoken language is spanish because people from spain they are spread across the world and spanish is an official language of around 17 countries mm-hmm. but the third question is the most important one because english is spoken by around 45 countries considered english as an official language and around 195 countries in this world there is only one common language that we can converse if we travel to all the 195 countries and that is english english and that is the reason we are asked to speak in english not because english is a good language yes. every language has its own benefits and disadvantages yeah. so when i tell this students think that okay there are 195 countries in this world so if you would like to visit all the 195 countries <laughs> let us learn english language yeah so communication skills plays a major role irrespective of the language that you speak so right. you have to understand what i say i have to understand uh, and maybe paraphrase what you have said right and then have my own conclusion towards what you speak mm-hmm. so i think communication plays a major role in enhancing someone's personality the way i communicate spreads a message about what my personality actually is so i right. think students 
on the least hand should have better communication skills. Forget about their marks. Maybe they score average marks. But an average student with exceptional communication skills would be an asset to any organization. That's my conclusion about totally what education agree. and soft skills is. Totally agree. And in addition to what you said, Shirin, I would like to add um, a few details. Uh, communication is not all about grammar only, right? Because communication has three parts. One is the choice of words. Uh, that uh, uh, Then we have uh, the tone of voice. Then finally, the body language, like you said. Yeah. The, the contribution of choice of words in communication is only 7%. And the tone of voice, 38%. The body language, it's a deadly combination, right? The body language can influence people 55%. I think if we can combine all these three parts while communicating with people, and of course, if we use our body language, which is in sync with what we say, that has to be in sync, right? Else it will be a wrong message. I think that's really important yeah. and I'm sure, you know, um, you have shared a lot of insights. So Shirin, what will be the plan of action for all those students who really want to, um, you know, communicate really, really well? So what are your suggestions? Maybe one or two suggestions for them. Yeah. Uh, so first suggestion from my side would be to uh, have a self-discovery of where we really like. So, um, Nowadays, just because we were talking about digitalizing things, um, there is uh, something called uh, a, a communication pattern that everybody can develop. Mm -hmm. So my communication pattern would be influenced by a lot of things that I've done in the past. Uh, what I've learned, maybe uh, the way I have cultivated my vocabulary. So uh, all these things play a very big role. And... Talking about the two suggestions from my part would be to understand where you lie as per your language abilities at present. Then right. only we can understand whether we have to improve further or maybe mm -hmm. what are the areas that we have to work upon. So uh, there is a British Council application that is available uh, in internet. So I'll just uh, give you uh, a hint about what that particular thing is. So it's called, this particular uh, application is called English Score which can be downloaded by everybody for free. It is available in a um, Play Store and it's available in App Store. So uh, if they download this English score application, there is something called core skills test, which they can do for free. Okay. And once you complete this core take test, they would give you a mark upon uh, what your current language score is. Okay. So they consider it as maybe uh, elementary, intermediate, okay. um, expert. So they give you marks. So uh, it's, it's kind of a basic test that everybody can do, not because uh, this is meant only for people who are speak native language. So everybody can do this and they can understand their language ability. So this is a respect of what we said, because uh, there are three, as you said, there are three things that play a major role. Mm -hmm. So with this particular test, we can understand how good our vocabulary is and how good our choice of words are. Right. But the other two things to improve that, you will have to have a thorough conviction about uh, how your style of communication is. So I have heard this particular quote which says, uh, communication is not about what you say, it's about how you say it. <laughs> so uh, there are n number of ways by which you can convey things. So I would suggest people to maybe use a camera and take a random topic and just start talking and then record it for one minute. Right. And then watch it for yourself. If you like the way you speak, that's good. Mm -hmm. And the the last person to like yourself is going to be you. Okay. Whatever Absolutely. we do, we like ourselves a lot. Yes, yes. So if we think this is not the right way to communicate, I think students have to improve. So these are my suggestions for them practically to imply that so that uh, people can understand where they lack and then improve upon that. Place. Rather than just doing something like, uh, I have heard this while I was um, studying in college, like uh, watch English movies. But I, my question was like, what if I'm, I don't like watching movies. I can't really do this. Yeah. So start reading books. Uh, nowadays, I don't think people rarely read books. So I, right. I always tell students, if you are the only person who is in your class to read books, you are going to be a magnificent person towards the final year because you are the only person who reads. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, the other uh, 
suggestions would be objective. So, uh, subjective. Everybody will have their own methods to improve. So, they can have their own hobbies. Right. To develop their communication skills. Okay. Now, I know why you are called as master trainer, Shirin. Fantastic insights, fantastic perspectives, amazing tips that you shared, not only to me, but also to the students, to the parents, to the community, to the, um, you know, uh, institutions. And together, we can be the change makers. We can, I, I strongly feel if there is a problem, there is a solution. If there are challenges, there are opportunities hidden in those challenges. It's something we have to find, identify those challenge, uh, those opportunities which are hidden, which is challenge is nothing but a treasure box, right? Which is closed. We just have to Absolutely. open it and then we have to take what, you know, we, we want based on our abilities, based on our skills and so on. Sherin, thank you so much. Really appreciate your valuable tips, suggestions and the solutions that you have shared with us today. And I, I'm sure it is going to benefit a lot of students, your students, my students, all the students in India and abroad. And of course, um, uh, those who, uh, teachers, if they, if you're watching this video, please try to inculcate uh, the solutions provided by Sherin. And parents, please listen to this carefully and then start, uh, you know, uh, empowering your kids, start having the right discussions with them and then understand what they want to do in their life and then understand what's happening today. We are living in the age of artificial intelligence, right? Whatever jobs we have today, after five years, I don't think so those jobs will exist. Please keep that in mind. And then you have to prepare your kids for the future based on what is going to happen in the future, considering we are living in the age of artificial intelligence. So with this, Sharin, thank you so much for your valuable time. Really, really appreciate it. And let's stay connected and uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. And you have a fantastic day ahead. Absolutely. And it was my pleasure, uh, Vasim, and all those people who are listening, who are subscribers to Vasim, do spread this word because uh, we are all in need of such uh, platforms where we can exhibit our opinions and maybe we can help reach out to different uh, people across the world and masses and we can inspire everybody to live a better life. So let's stay connected. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Vasim. Thank you, Shari.